Emerald City Minato is closer and prettier than ever. Hey, let's follow the yellow brick road to explore Minato, Japan, and get the facts on urban farming. Minato covers 20.34 square kilometers with a population of 314,159. The city features ground, underground, and extreme underground levels. Centered on the Japanese archipelago, this city features, or this subtropical city features, uh, is next to Tokyo Bay and offers views of Tokyo Tower as well as Rainbow Bridge. What extraordinary model! It's so small, like Munchkin Land. What's the scale? The sum of the square root of any two sides of, oh, it says one centimeter equals 13 meters. This model captures the urban farming solution and key city features. Roads are made from stove burner coils, a refrigerator cooling fan creates the education district, oh, and a stove knob forms a park. But something seems different. That's right, the poppy fields have vanished due to urban sprawl. Past tsunamis littered the land with contaminants, leaving little arable land. Food imports eclipsed 900 billion ton kilometers. Average farmers were over 65 years old. Unhealthy food resulted in those wicked food problems of the West. Diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. Oh my, what would Anne say? She'd say, say we need to get the facts. The engineering wizards developed a sustainable resolution to this agricultural crisis. You might say they started a revolution. A revolution? You mean a battle with fly monkeys? Put them up. Which one of them first? Not a battle. A revolution to turn things around. People used to think outside the box. Minato's solution is inside the box. Inside factories. That stands for Farming with Agricultural Controlled Technology. A multidisciplinary group of engineers defined the problem, brainstormed and designed solutions, built and tested prototypes, then modified and improved their sustainable solution. Agricultural, structural, and geological engineers relocated farming to a controlled indoor environment 40 meters underground. 40 meters underground? That sounds scary. Have courage. During earthquakes, resistant support beams in the underground location allow buildings to safely move with the earth. Inflatable tunnel plugs ensure safety by blocking smoke, gases, and floodwaters. To minimize cost, city planners place factories in shafts left by rotating shield tunnel equipment used when digging the extreme underground. Hydrogen fuel cells provide clean power for factories. Extracting hydrogen from steam with rusted recycled metal in a solar thermal system makes it affordable. Don't worry, my galvanized friend. We'll keep the rust off. To maximize heat for the solar thermal system, double mirrored solar satellites reflect to Tokyo Bay's man-made island. Also on the island, factory plant waste and garbage are converted into biofuel pellets using fluidized pyrolyzer technology. Engineers carefully considered lighting, water, nutrients, and air quality for this sterile hydroponic farm. Broad spectrum LED lights mount above plants and shelves stack from floor to ceiling. By alternating light and darkness, plants grow faster but remain highly nutritious. A 4 to 1 ratio of red to blue lights enables photosynthesis. Cool white light encourages leafy growth. Clean water is a byproduct of hydrogen fuel cells. It flows to separate base trays under each stack of shelves. Factories use 90% less water than traditional farms with no stormwater runoff. Nutrients are automatically and accurately fed to plants, adapting to each stage of the plant's growth. A soilless nutrient film technique gently bathes each plant through the water. Near-infrared spectrometers ensure optimal nutrient content. Nanosensors monitor air quality and temperature. Air circulates to create crystal plasma field, filtering contaminants. Daytime temperatures range 10 to 15 degrees higher than nighttime. Relative humidity is maintained under 60%. Agricultural engineers chose to traditional Japanese favorites to be main crops, the vitamin-packed vegetable komatsuna and the protein-rich indeterminate dwarf soybeans. Komatsuna is a mild mustard spinach green used in stir-fried dishes and in salads. It matures in 24 days. Soybeans are used in tofu, miso, and soy sauce. They mature in 45 days. 350,000 heads of komatsuna 
and 100,000 soy plants are grown per season, per factory, which feeds all citizens. Crops are harvested using robotic arms acting as mini combines and then retailed through robotic silos similar to elevators on transit and on ground level. Silos are identified with the Japanese food pyramid, the spinning top. Citizens were excited. They desired a way to grow their own food. Factor fridges are in-home refrigerators with grow chambers. Factor cubes are factories skills at businesses and schools. Factories have many benefits including fresh produce, predictable results, resource conservation, and no pesticides. Risks are mitigated. Separate water systems minimize widespread disease, and portable hydrogen fuel cells are in place to overcome power failure. A trade-off of artificial light over natural sunlight provides year-round growing seasons. Shucks, I'm speechless. Minotaur's on top of the solution. That's because education in Minotaur is exemplary, where people go to become great thinkers. Adaptive learning and externship secure lifelong learning. Tokyo University developed Gensai technology, which leads innovations for everyone. Emergency services keep Minato safe. Emerging units have cross-trained emergency responders. Tokyo University developed Gensai cameras, which de detect uh, heat, smoke, and criminal activity. Fire retardants made from factory-grown soybean polymers create a non-toxic nano intumescent coating. Maybe instead of straw, you should use some of that soybean polymer. Hmm. Transportation minimizes Minato's carbon footprint. Fast and efficient maglevs move people and freight, reducing traffic on roads. Superior health services and fresh food ensure high longevity. Dissolving micromeds search the body for illness and disease, resulting in early diagnosis. Clean power comes from hydrogen fuel cells, solar arrays, and biofuel. Recyclables are reclaimed locally. Old fire filtration methods clean other water sources. Minato has everything. Factories, emerald green utilities, exemplary education, and healthy citizens. We've seen the facts. Having an open mind to other cultures and different ideas, we can Time. make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Question, um, what are you doing to entice future business investors in your city? So what would you, I could future business investment? So something we do for future business investment is we offer them facto cubes. Facto cubes are scalable factory models so they can grow their own fresh produce for their businesses and for their workers. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, the city is fully populated today and what you're doing is to make it largely self-sufficient so they'll have everything they need. Is there anything else that the, the city's gonna need from outside? So, as we have em our embassy row, so it has different embassies. So we have a few imports for the Western diets that because some people from other cultures will want their own food, so we import foods for them. What did you consider was the most important aspect of designing your urban farm? Probably one of the most important place or important things when we were designing our urban farm was where it was going to be located. Minato is a real city, so we wanted to solve a real world problem. And as you can see, we have urban sprawl. And so placement underground was key, and that's what we had to think about. And that's finally what we came up with. Another thing was getting it to where citizens could purchase it easily. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have it located at transit stations and on ground level when they pass by when they're done with work. Will you repeat the question? I'm not sure I can. <laughs> I got it. So, um, so people live on both the first and second level, is that correct? Yes. yes. So talk, talk to me about how life on the second level is because that seems underground. And it's exactly like you're above ground. There's projections of trees and scents of the trees and everything. There's light that makes it make, uh, seem like you're above ground. And there's six lane highways. So, and actually, you live in Washington, so you've taken the metro system. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the feel of how you travel on the second layer, but it's really a city. I will resist making many jokes around that, but yes, that sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What factors went into deciding how you deal with uh, 
water treatment and providing a good source of drinking water to your residents? So one of the many considerations we had to have is make sure it's pure. Make sure it's a pure water, potable for our citizens to drink. And so we had to figure out how we can actually, how we can make the water potable. So what we have our water district in our third layer and we purify it using ultraviolet filtration methods after being pre-treated. So you have a very gnarly project here because it's hard enough to retrofit a building to make it green, but to retrofit a city is very intense. My question is, what do, what is, how do they currently meet their energy demands? What energy sources do they use? And knowing that you're going underground, your energy is gonna go up exponentially. So could you describe in more detail how you're meeting that increased energy demand? Joy, you're an energy expert. You want to talk about the hydrogen fuel cell? All right, so um, in our city, they're using hydrogen fuel cells, and we're able to make it more affordable and efficient by taking rusted metal and heating it to very high temperatures. The oxygen from the metal leaves the metal, and the metal needs oxygen. So we pour steam over the metal, and the oxygen from the steam goes inside the metal, and the hydrogen is left to be piped through our city. Also, we have clean biofuel, which comes from plant waste and garbage. We combine those to together, and using fluidized pyrolyzer technology, those pellets are then burned as a clean biofuel for backup. What about the expense of going underground? I mean, surely it's quite expensive to dig that much. So, actually, when we were digging the extreme underground, so we have our rotating shield tunneling digger, and so it, we have to dig the underground because you have to keep developing for like freight magla, for our freight maglev. So that's why we placed our factory next to that, so that we the shafts left by the rotating shield tunneling diggers can fill in the spot gaps. And also we use the latest technology, which is more, more affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys.